Hello, uh, it's nice to be with you again for this talk about the sacred, the divine Roman liturgy. And uh, this afternoon we are speaking about the prayers of preparation before the Holy Communion. So we will just have a series of uh, prayers we will study together and try to contemplate. So the invocation and use daily, we pray three times, and then the three prayers of preparation, that's the topic of the day. But before to start, I wanted to give you a little image, a little analogy of how you should prepare your soul for Holy Communion. And for this purpose, I have asked my dog, Spire, he's called Spire after the tower of my church, I asked Spire to be present. Spire, sleepy? Spire, come in. And uh, I will show you something. You will see, it's just an analogy, of course, it's just an image, it's nothing comparable to the Eucharist, but look this street. And look Spire now, look his attitude. All his attention, all his concentration is focused on this little treat. And if I ask him to be a good boy, and if I ask him to give me, yes, check, that's a good boy. And look, it's a shame you cannot see his looking on the camera, because he's looking at me. But he's totally, totally focused on the treat. C'est bien. Good boy. It's just an analogy, but if we could have this attention, concentration, to be totally focused on the Lord, preparing our soul with a great desire. St. Francis de Sales says that um, the desire is already um, full of charity. It's already a beautiful act of love. So, you know the preparation for the Eucharist starts with the pattern of Ster. Until the moment we will receive the Holy Communion, uh, and it's a very, very important time. And perhaps you can be more united with the prayer of the Church if you follow this uh, Agnus Dei and then uh, the free prayers uh, of, uh, of uh, preparation. So Agnus Dei is present in the Mass from uh, a, a long time. Uh, it's um, it's an invocation we, we have received, it's a tradition we have received from the Gospel and exactly from St. John the Baptist when he showed the Blessed Lord to the people, he said, Ecce Agnus Dei. Um, so we say two, two, twice, Ecce uh, Agnus Dei Miserere Nobis, and the third time, no, Dona Nobis Pacem. So this presence of Agnus Dei in the Mass is attested uh, at least from the 7th century, at the 10th century, uh, the popes asked this invocation to be prayed three times. And in the 11th century, because of the trouble in the church and the difficulties the church was facing at this time, it was asked to add uh, the third invocation, uh, Dona Nobis Pacem, because before it was three times Miserere Nobis. When it's a requiem mass, the invocation is not uh, Miserere nobis, miserere nobis, dona nobis pacem, but dona is requiem, dona is requiem, dona is requiem sempiternam. And then we, we uh, didn't uh, bang our, um, you know, the coop, um, because uh, it's not a supplication for us, it's not an, uh, an act of preparation, it's a supplication for um, the faithful departed. So Agnus Dei is important and uh, the last invocation, Dona Nobis Pacem, is followed during the Solemn Mass by a, a sign of peace uh, shared uh, within the clergy. So the priest, after having prayed his invocation, is uh, continuing with the first of the three prayers, which inspiration is clearly from the Gospel, and, and then he will kiss the altar and share uh, um, a sign of peace with the deacon and then the deacon will share it with the subdeacon and the subdeacon will share it with the clergy present in the choir. It's, uh, it's certain that in the ancient time uh, this sign of peace was shared also with the faithful present in the nave and it has stopped to be the case uh, since the 13th century because at this time, at this point, men and women were not uh, stopped to be separated in the, in the church, they were mixed. Because until the 13th century, 
men were from um, were in a, in a, in a, in, a, in the side of the church and the women on the other side. Uh, so that's why it, it stopped. This um, this moment of Agnus Dei, uh, it's there in the Roman liturgy before communion because it's important to have the reign of charity before to receive the Lord. In some of the Eastern rites, this uh, liturgy of Agnus Dei and uh, the keys of peace, the sign of peace, is existing also, but a bit earlier in the liturgy, before the offertory, following the advice of the Lord that if you remember that you have something against your brother before to offer your offering, your oblation to the altar, so first have forgiveness to your brother. Um, so then after this sign of peace and this prayer before, we have two other prayers and uh, these prayers are quite modern, um, certainly around um, the 15th century and uh, they are coming from the tradition, the devotion of the priest. Um, the devotion of the priest who were preparing their communion has been like fixed in this moment of the liturgy. I think that's the most important I wanted to tell you today. Ecce uh, Agnus Dei. There is a little um, something a bit different on the Monday Thursday. Um, we have kept the tradition to say just miserere nobis and to not share a sign of peace, to not uh, have confusion with uh, the awful and profane, the profanation of the kisses of peace uh, from Judas, the betrayer of the Lord, and uh, because it was on this Monday, on the Monday Thursday before the Good Friday. So on the Monday Thursday, you will not uh, find these uh, rites in the Catholic Church to, to, to not use this beautiful sign uh, the same day he has been profanated by the betrayer. So, what I want you to, to remember in our, in our talk today, it's uh, the, the, the beauty and the necessity to have these prayers of preparation before to receive, to take Holy Communion. And uh, <coughs> even if you are, um, if you have a, a good missal, if you have a good means, so just follow perhaps the translation. These prayers will help you also to prepare your communion just before the, the confiteor. I like you. I like. Uh, I hope, sorry, that uh, you you like these little talks. And uh, it's going to to finish on the eighth of December, because it's going to be the feast we were preparing by this twenty days talk. Um, so I wish you now. Uh, a good Sunday. You will have another talk tomorrow and I wish you, because I will not see you for another talk myself, I wish you a very very happy feast of the Immaculate Conception. May God bless you all. Goodbye.